Good evening and welcome to our Wednesday evening service. Start on page 66 of the BAS. O oh Lord, I call to you, come to me quickly. Hear my, Hear my voice, voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer be set forth in your sight as incense. The lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Behold now, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, you that stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the holy place, and bless the Lord, the Lord who made heaven and earth, bless you out of Zion. And we'll read our Psalm 118 on page 873. And we'll go from 73 to this, uh, 88. And we'll all sing together. Your hands have made me in fashion. Give me understanding that I may learn your commands. Those who fear you will be glad when they see me, because I trust in your word. I know, O oh Lord, that your judgments are right, and that in faithfulness you have afflicted me. Let your loving kindness be my comfort as you have promised to your servant. Let your compassion come to me, that I may live, for your law is my delight. Let the arrogant be put to shame, for they wrong me with lies, but I meditate on your commandments. Let those who fear return to me, let also heart those who know your decrees. Let my heart be sound in your statutes, that I may not be put to shame. My soul has longed for your salvation. I have put my hope in your sword. My eyes have failed from watching your promise. And I say, when will you comfort me? I have become like a leather flask in the smoke but I have not forgotten your statutes. How much longer must I wait? When will you give judgment against those who persecute me? The proud have dug pits for me. They do not keep your law. All your commandments are true. Help me, for they persecute me with lies. They have also made an end of me on earth. But I have not forsaken your commands. In your loving kindness, revive me, that I may keep the decrees of your mouth. And we'll have a read, please. The first reading is from the book of Genesis. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering, and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. 
When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place the, the Lord will provide. As it is said to, to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and, and not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you, and I will make your off, offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies, and by your offspring shall all nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. The second reading is from the book of Mark. The Pharisees came and began to argue with him, asking him for a sign from heaven to test him. And he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, Why does this generation ask for a sign? Tru truly I tell you, no sign will be given to this generation. And he left them. And getting into the boat again, he went across to the other side. Now the disciples had forgotten to bring any bread, and they had only one loaf with them in the boat. And he cautioned them, saying, Watch out, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and the yeast of Herod. They said to one another, It is because we have no bread. And becoming aware of it, Jesus said to them, Why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes and fail to see? Do you have ears and fail to hear? And do you not remember when I broke the five loaves for the five thousand? How many baskets full of broken pieces did you collect? They said to him, Twelve. And the seven for the four thousand? How many baskets full of broken pieces did you collect? And they said to him, Seven. Then he said to them, Do you not under yet understand? They came to Bethesda, Bethsaida. Some people brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. And when he had put saliva on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked him, Can you see anything? And the man looked up and said, I can see people, but they looked like trees walking. Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again, and he looked intently. And his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Then he sent him away to his home, saying, Do not even go into the village. Well, today we're going to talk about Ansgar, and he was the apostle for Scandinavia, and today is his day because he died on February the 3rd in 865. He was born September 8th in 801, and today we remember Ansgar. He was a 9th century missionary who strove to bring the gospel of Christ to the people of Denmark and Sweden. Now, Ansgar was the son of a noble Frankish family and was born during the reign of Charles the Great, or Charlemagne. He was educated at a Benedictine monastery in Picardy, which is in northern France. When as a young boy, he learned in a vision that his mother was in the company of Mary, the mother of Jesus. His careless attitude towards spiritual matters changed to seriousness. Ansgar began his labors in the year 826 when the emperor of the Franks, the son of Charlemagne, Louis the Pious, asked him to open a mission in southern Denmark. Even with the backing of the local king, his success was very modest. Nevertheless, after a couple years in Denmark, he decided to cross the Baltic and launch a mission with the Swedes. When he returned, he found that the Pope had appointed him Archbishop of Hamburg with jurisdiction over all the missions in Scandinavia. From the moment of his appointment until his death, over 30 years later, Ansgar experienced very little except disappointment 
and frustration. Unable to find enough staff, his mission to Sweden soon withered to nothing. A rebellion in Denmark overthrew the king who had supported him, and the rebels quickly smothered the young Danish church. In 845, Hamburg itself was burnt to the ground by Viking raiders. All church treasures and books were completely destroyed. He then, Ansgar then moved his missionary base to Bremen, which nearly suffered the same fate several times over. He labored to the end to end the Baltic slave trade, and though he redeemed countless thousands from bondage. Viking slavers continued to operate with impunity. Despite all these setbacks, Ansgar persevered in his mission, and whenever one opportunity was cut off, he sought another avenue for spreading the gospel. His persistence did have one small return in 854, when a new king in southern Denmark allowed him to reopen the mission and begin rebuilding the Danish church. He died on this day 11 years later. The church honors Ansgar as the apostle of Scandinavia because his tenacious efforts in the face of disaster and continuing discouragement were like the seed mentioned in the gospel itself. They were a small beginning which eventually bore a rich harvest two centuries later when Christianity at last found a home among the children of the Vikings. Ansgar died on February the 3rd, 865, and was buried in Bremen, which is now in modern day Germany. Another monk who shared Ansgar's missionary journeys to Scandinavia, named Rimbert, noted that Ansgar wore a rough hair shirt, lived on bread and water, and showed great charity to the poor. Let us stand and say our affirmation of our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And for our intercessions and prayers, it's page 126. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For our, our families, families friends, friends, and neighbors, neighbors, and for all those who are alone. For this community, our country, and the world. For all who, who work for, for justice, justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims, victims of, of hunger, hunger, fear, injustice, injustice and, and oppression. oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Gregory, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For our own needs and those of others. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We exalt you, O God, our King. 
and praise, praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all those who have died in the peace of Christ, and for those whose faith is known to you alone, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them, who put, put their, their trust in you. in you. We pray to you also for forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gracious God, you have heard the prayers of your faithful people. You know our needs before we ask, and our ignorance in asking. Grant our request as may be best for us. This we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, you sent forth your servant and scar and became his stronghold against despair when prejudice was deaf to his preaching and violence overthrew his labors. Sustain your church in the days of discouragement that we may ever trust you to preserve and bring to perfect fruition what your own right hand has planted. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let's say together the Lord's Prayer on page 70. And now as our Savior, sorry, 71, now as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.